ask you about writing about science for specifically for your, the young adult market now and now middle grade as well uh, and your world building because uh, obviously as we've demonstrated aptly uh, over the course of this conversation and 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 by your uh, bio available online right now um, you've got a higher level of understanding of knowledge certainly physics than your average person I wonder if there's some isolation wonder walking around talking with uh, the rest of us who don't have that um, where there's, or you don't know some of the things that I know. Um, I, I don't know if there's some separation, but then that has to be magnified a little bit more when you're writing for younger readers um, who maybe don't have, or certainly don't have the same scientific training. So how do you talk about uh, science for younger readers in a way that satisfies you, but that is still relatable for them, that they're still going to be able to grasp and that doesn't get in the way of uh, the simple joy of the story? Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be disappointed in me because okay. my, my criteria for, for really good world building is that it hang together, not necessarily that it be like faithful to the universe. So like my transhuman characters um, in the Swan Riders and the Scorpion Rules, um, so they're transhuman intelligences, they're artificial silicon computer digitized intelligences that can possess other people through specialized implants that some of these other people have. Um, and that works by hand wavium and magnets. <laughs> there's, there's a set of rules set out in the book about who they can do it to, what they, what kind of equipment they need. You know, they're not just hopping from person to person, um, you know, and that they have to have the implants and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but like, Basically, this is a story about demonic possession with a layer of hand wavium and magnets on top of it. <laughs> um, you know, it hangs together. It, it hangs together really well. Like it's, you know, it's all the rules are laid out, and you know, the the plot exploits the rules in interesting ways. And you know, I figured it out as I went around, and I think people will find it very satisfying and very complete as a universe. But um, it's it's not like you know, Discworld or something where you're going to or not Discworld, excuse me, Ringworld. It's not like you know the great science fiction, Silver Age science fiction where you're going to learn about what exactly it takes to construct a Dyson sphere and why we might want to do that. It's you know, it's much more like. What if demonic possession were real with hand wavium and magnets? <laughs> you know, every once in a while, I get just totally off the loop about some piece of research. You know, so like in Scorpion Rules, so these are my science fiction books, so it's more relevant there. In Scorpion Rules, you know, they're using magnetic launched ships. They're launching off a magnetic rail um, for suborbital craft because um, they're a like post fossil fuel society and you know so i got really into magnetic rail launches i'm like what we really need in this world is like a lobstrom loop which is uh, a magnetic rail that goes up to space so to okay. launch things into space you have this standing you know part it's it's literally called a lobstrom loop you can look it up and then i got like five, six days of research deep on that before I realized that none of the characters care about how the magnetic rail works. None of them. Any more than the characters in my contemporary novel care about how the internal combustion engine works. You know? They just have to show it working. And maybe I have to know the rules for it, so I know how fast you can get from A to B, and whether someone from B can come to A in an unexpectedly short period of time. But, you know, I don't have to, you know, write down the rules for eddy coils or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of science, even in my science fiction. There's a lot of internally consistent world building, but not a lot of science. I'm, I'm really much more interested in stories. So even my science fiction basically has the same rules as my magical systems. They're just internally consistent even if they're not necessarily plausible. Is that maybe partly because you get it out of your system when you're with your work for the uh, Perimeter so, Institute? <laughs> like, all right, I've done science, now fun. <laughs> maybe so, or maybe it's spite again. Maybe I'm, you know, reacting to reading 
uh, Silver Age science fiction like Larry Niven when I was, you know, a kid in the 80s and going, this entire bit is boring. This is like the whale blubber scene in Moby Dick. I don't care how the whale blubber works. I want back to the story. So I, I leave all the technical stuff out. Sometimes I know it. Um, sometimes it's just something that's worked out very carefully. Um, uh somewhere in the background, but it hardly ever lands, it hardly ever lands on the page. The thing to do, I think, is to filter it through what the characters care about, you know? So the characters care about, you know, the characters care about what's happening to them, which means they don't care about how the spaceships get from place to place. Um, they care a lot more about how the demonic possession thing works because that's much closer to home. Um, but they really don't care about the, the how the spaceships get up. So the world building, my world building tends to be a little bit, I guess, softer than that. So, yeah. I mean, I like a good hard science fiction novel, but I'm more interested in people than I am in machines. So. You keep a separate file where you write down all the rules of your universe or? Yeah. How do you, I, how do you do that? If I you around, which I can't because it's a big screen, you could see the pin board here where I have all the rules for the thing that I'm working on uh, right now. Like, you know, um, it's got maps and um, like there's a set of how you strap into this set of physical controls and what your right hand does and what your left hand does. And, you know, sketches of the creatures. And yeah, so it's there's kind of a reference board over here <laughs> so that I can keep it all consistent. Yeah, it's there's big files. I use Scrivener, which I think everybody should. It's great. So that lets you keep it in the same box.